The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up. Smashed by an 18-wheeler. It's probably going to be a body recovery, not a rescue situation. A young man lay in a coma. Lying there and not know if he would ever see his eyes open again. And his parents are told to brace for the worst. There's no way for them to predict what's going to happen. Watch a miraculous recovery. He exits the hospital walking. On today's 700 Club. Well, the Democrats had their shot at it, and it was all against Trump. Isn't he horrible? He was responsible for the coronavirus. He's responsible for my husband getting laid off. He's responsible for illegal aliens. He's responsible for everything bad. He's lazy. He's no good. He's terrible. And I wish people had voted for me instead of for him. And that was it. But... What do they offer? The Democrats offered nothing. They have given no plan to the country on how they're going to govern. Get rid of him, but what are you putting in his place? Not one vision for the future that we can find out. Well, they talked about climate change. They talked about gun, gun control. They talked about empowering women. All themes of the Democratic platform on day three. But most of the night was devoted, as I said, to pounding President Trump. And the vice presidential nominee, Kamala Harris, delivered the biggest blows. Eric Phillip has that. Accepting the Democratic vice presidential nomination became secondary, as Kamala Harris made her priority introducing herself to the world in a more intimate way. I accept your nomination for vice president of the United States of America. Just before uttering those history-making words, Harris acknowledged it was something her late mother would never have imagined her daughter would get to say. Harris shared a bit about her life, how she and her sister were raised by a single mother who taught them to be proud to be Black and to cherish their Indian heritage. That she graduated from an HBCU and is married with two stepchildren who call her Mamala. All of it leading to this moment in time, which is clear to her. Donald Trump's failure of leadership has cost lives and livelihoods. We must elect Joe Biden. Several issues were touched on throughout the night, along with Biden's solutions, like climate change and gun violence, with the emotional story from a mother whose teen was shot in the head. The child that I birthed is not able to live his dreams. And that hurts. The immigration issue told through a letter to the president from an 11-year-old whose mother was deported. Now my mom is gone, and she's been taken from us for no reason at all. Every day that passes, you deport more moms and dads and take them away from kids like me. So go ahead and celebrate, you rabble rouser, you rule breaker. Also, women's empowerment a movement some say President Trump doesn't understand. We know what he doesn't, that when women succeed, America succeeds. Former President Barack Obama said he not only found a VP in Biden, but a brother, underscoring what's at stake in November. This administration has shown it will tear our democracy down if that's what it takes for them to win. I did hope, for the sake of our country, that Donald Trump might show some interest in taking the job seriously, but he never did. What I know about Joe, what I know about Kamala, is that they actually care about every American. This crisis is on Donald Trump and the Republicans who enable him. On November 3rd, we will hold them all accountable. Hillary Clinton urging viewers to make sure there's not a repeat of 2016 when her name was on the ballot. For four years, people have told me, I didn't realize how dangerous he was. I wish I could do it all over. Or worse, I should have voted. Look, this can't be another woulda, coulda, shoulda election. So let's fight with conviction. Let's fight with hope. Let's fight with confidence. A long time coming, but I know 
Kamala Harris used the term put in the work several times during her address. She said she and Joe Biden are ready to do so, but they need the American people to do so as well. And that begins at the ballot box. Eric Phillips, CBN News. Well, chief political uh, correspondent uh, David Brody is joining us. Now, David, uh, it seems like there was a big attack against the president. Well, that's what you expect mm -hmm. the people to do. But how come they're not putting forth any kind of policy? Well, Pat, I think it's pretty simple. And the answer is, if the American people knew some of these radical policies the Democrats stand for, they may think uh, twice about voting for them. I mean, look, are you think about it. I mean, are you going to get up on stage and say we're for uh, late term abortion, the Green New Deal? Uh, Kamala Harris has talked about ICE being like the KKK. Uh, they're for uh, immigrants, uh, uh, benefits for illegal immigrants in the country. So, I mean, if you kind of go through all of this part and par parcel, uh, you, you have a Democrat party that has you have to wonder, you know, whether or not they want to even go there with any of this and kind of brings me back to the theme of this whole week, Pat, which if you notice, uh, the Democrats pretty much have gone for that Rust Belt voter. They are trying to go as center as possible here, even though the agenda is far left. They need those Rust Belt voters in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. That's the bread and butter. And look, from a white Catholic standpoint, remember Donald Trump did well with white Catholics in 2016. Hillary Clinton was down in Pennsylvania and Michigan, Wisconsin. Those are the voters to watch for uh, in these next uh, few months. Um, David, uh, Kamala Harris is being positioned as a moderate. Uh, mm -hmm. Is she really, well, what does she actually stand for? Well, I think it's a good question, Pat. And, you know, I have uh, I've gone over about six to seven hours of uh, tape every uh, well, in the last four or five days or so of Kamala Harris's interviews. I've actually been watching them. Of course, my wife is looking at me going, uh, why are you watching seven hours of Kamala Harris? Uh, you know, can we have dinner? Uh, but anyhow, beyond the, the family issue there, look, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, she positions herself very well. She's very liberal. But if you listen to the interviews, she very very rarely kind of goes out there on a limb and doesn't commit necessarily to anything. So if you look at GovTrack, a 2019 GovTrack, not survey, but an actual uh, list of who's the most liberal senator out there, Kamala Harris is number one, more than Bernie Sanders, more than Elizabeth Warren. And, and part of the reason for that is that only 15% of the time she worked across the aisle. So look, she's very, very liberal. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which we've heard a lot about that would basically help uh, religious expression in this country, she wants to narrow that. It's a bill she act, uh, actually introduced. And then even as California Attorney General, uh, when she was doing that back in the day, uh, she supported an act. And as a matter of fact, she she proposed uh, and actually uh, fought for an act that would allow for pregnancy centers, pro-life pregnancy centers, they would actually have to say, hey, abortions are also available in the state. She wanted pro-life pregnancy centers to do that. Uh, it was turned out it was struck down at the Supreme Court. So there's a whole litany of things here in Kamala Harris's uh, uh, resume. She supports what's called the Green New Deal, uh, but they're talking about a multi-trillion dollar expense, uh, including refitting every uh, office building. But does that mean they're not going to use any fossil fuels at all? Uh, how extensive is the so-called Green New Deal? Well, it's trillions and trillions of extensive uh, reworking of the entire economy, Pat, as you know. And so uh, this isn't just a, a bill uh, that would become law and just continue to run up the deficit. I mean, this is a totally dismantling of the U.S. economy uh, to, to the likes we've never seen before. And so th this is what uh, Kamala Harris does support. Joe Biden supports it, too. Uh, and guess what? Uh, AOC, and we know about her, uh, she's the, the leader here on all of this. And there's even been talk about if uh, Biden wins uh, the presidency, that she could potentially be EPA administrator. AOC is EPA administrator. So, so this is what uh, you have potentially to look forward to if Biden wins. It's a frightening prospect <laughs> how, to, how to scare your children at night. But I mean, we can't use any fossil fuels. We can't use uh, oil. We can't use uh, 
what is it? Are all our power is going to come from wind turbines or, 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 or solar? Where do we get our electricity? Well, you know about what they said about cows, how cows are no good. I, I won't go into exactly why cows are no good. You can look it up on the Internet. But beyond all of that, uh, they want to have mass transit in terms of rail around uh, around America eventually. In other words, eventually they like to eliminate air travel. What? Eliminate air travel and everybody, you know, sorry, I, I've got to leave for uh, vacation. I've got to go travel to California by train. I mean, what in the world? Anyhow, this is what's going on. Look, I will say one thing real quick on Kamala Harris last yeah. night. I want to give her some props. Uh, I thought she actually, her speech was very good. Uh, she's a very good politician. Uh, but sometimes you have to be careful. Uh, you know, sometimes what looks good as, as a meal, kind of like a Big Mac, hey, it looks great, uh, but it might not di digest as well later on. Well, she's a protege of Willie Brown, who was Speaker of the House uh, mm -hmm. uh, in Sacramento. And uh, they were... Uh, can you use the term lover? What, 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 what were they? I mean, they, they, they were romantically attached, weren't they? Well, I can tell you this, that the media is not going to go there. Uh, they won't even go down that road. I mean, look at the Tara Reid uh, situation, the Joe Biden uh, allegation against him from Tara Reid. Now, this is someone that Kamala Harris had said uh, that women should be believed and that, that she wanted to hear more from Tara Reid. And now all of a sudden she's on the ticket with Joe Biden. So uh, I don't expect the media to go there like they did uh, with uh, Donald Trump and others. Thanks for your insights. Well, folks, in other news, violent crime is skyrocketing in our cities, and local police are overwhelmed. But there's some good news in the effort to roll it back. John Jessup has more on that. Thanks, Pat. Attorney General Bill Barr is announcing early success in Operation Legend. Since its July launch, the enforcement campaign has produced more than 1,000 arrests, at least 217 people charged with federal crimes, and the confiscation of nearly 400 firearms. The federal government sent about 1,000 additional agents to nine cities with the FBI, ATF, DEA, and U.S. Marshals working alongside local enforcement on violent crime and homicides. The government also made available about $80 million in grants for hiring more law enforcement and for technology to help solve gun crimes. Well, what's being called a siege of lightning strikes is adding to the inferno devouring California. Hundreds of wildfires burning across the state, have been burning across the state rather, and have uh, some have linked up, creating massive spans of flames called complexes. Near Vacaville, northeast of San Francisco, multiple fires are tearing through communities, so far leaving nearly 50,000 acres scorched and thousands of people ordered to evacuate. In Napa, more than 46,000 acres have burned, threatening at least 2,000 homes. In Pat, near Santa Cruz, 20 fires, 22 fires have melded together. Well, it's a horrible uh, situation, and we, we certainly need to pray and help for our people in California. But this is triple-digit temperature, uh, unprecedented, adding to these fires, and out of it comes uh, so much heat that it generates uh, tornadoes. It's, it's just a, 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 a triple, a, you know, solar punch to the people living in that state. Uh, Terry? was still ahead, crushed by an 18-wheeler. This driver had broken bones throughout his body, and he was not expected to survive. So how was he able to walk out of the hospital after only a few weeks? Well, you have to see it to believe it. That's later on today's show. But first, no more violence and no more government handouts. What's really needed to bring about social change in our country? A manifesto, Bishop Harry Jackson explains right after this. Eyeballs burned, government decrees against church gatherings and growing hostilities against Christian values. Is this just a momentary blip in our history? Or is secularism a new religion bent on taking over America? Gary Lane brings us this amazing story. Is the recent assault against Christian values the beginning of a revolution to transform America? A number of signs portray a nation on the edge of becoming a society where instead of kneeling in prayer to our Creator, people bow to a godless state instead. 
In July, California Governor Gavin Newsom moved to prohibit indoor church services and put limits on home Bible studies. Supporters of Newsom's orders say indoor church gatherings place people at risk of contracting COVID-19. Appearing on this week's episode of The Global Lane, author and radio host Eric Metaxas says Americans can't ignore government overreach. We should all instantly say, that's an American, you can't do that in America, and by the way, we won't abide by that. Meanwhile, in Washington, D.C., activists went unpunished after painting the words defund the police beside a Black Lives Matter mural. But pro-life activists say Mayor Muriel Bowser ordered police to arrest students for chalking Black Preborn Lives Matter on a public sidewalk. This is viewpoint discrimination, that she is choosing which phrases she's allowing to be painted on public streets, and you can't do that because of the Constitution. U.S. Attorney General William Barr told Fox host Mark Levin, the American left is uninterested in dialogue or compromise. The left wants power because... That is essentially their state of grace and their their secular religion. They want to run people's lives so they can design utopia for all of us. And that's what, you know, that's what turns them on. And it's the it's the lust for power. Barr contends Antifa and other militant Marxists are advancing the left's religion by infiltrating peaceful protests, utilizing urban guerrilla tactics to force political change. In Portland recently, the American flag and Bibles were burned in front of the federal courthouse. Metaxas describes it as an assault on Western culture and human dignity. Christians should be the most alarmed in a sense, but everyone who has a stake in civility, what's best for the country. And when Antifa radicals recently threatened to tear down a 56-foot cross in Eugene, Oregon, several hundred Christians gathered in prayer to stop the attack. New Hope College President Pastor Wayne Cordero says that's when police successfully turned away a busload headed to the college campus. Ultimately, it's a spiritual battle, isn't it? And so we have to draw a line and say, enough, we're going to stand on the promises of God's word. We're going to take this to prayer and praise, and we're going to let the Lord take on this battle and begin to make a difference. Gary Lane, CBN News. Your values are under attack, but the Lord is going to raise up a standard. Isn't that what the Bible says? When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. And God is going to raise up a standard against some of this anarchy that is coming and tearing up our country. I I think the American people are are going to be aware of what's happening, and they're not going to accept it. I just cannot believe that throughout this nation we're going to accept Uh, a spirit of anarchy or a spirit of government control or socialism or communism or what have you. We just aren't going to have it. Terry? Well, coming up, we expect his brain to look like dog food. That's what doctors told one mother after her son's head was crushed. What did his MRI reveal instead? And why were his doctors so stunned? The answers are all coming up next. This is Pat Robertson with an excerpt from my new book, I Have Walked with the Living God. I hope it will help you in your walk with God. One evening, I was invited to dinner at the Shoreham Hotel in Washington by an associate of an extraordinary New York philanthropist whose name was Mary Lasker. Across from me was a young senator from Massachusetts whose name was Jack Kennedy. Sitting next to him was a roving photographer for the Washington Times Herald. Her name was Jacqueline Bouvier. And someone later asked me whether or not it looked like their relationship was serious. My reply showed a complete lack of understanding when I said, she looks to me like a starstruck young actress. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Well, you can imagine how foolish I felt later on when this young photographer became Mrs. Jack Kennedy, a worldwide celebrity and the mother of two famous children. Well, that's just one of the examples, because it shows up uh, your, uh, yours truly 
didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have had some interesting experiences, and it's all pointed out in that book, I Walk with the Living God. It's fascinating to see how God connected you and guided you. And, That's right. And actually turned your path as you well, went. Well, I, I had some experiences. You know, I've, I've, I've met a lot of people and, and been involved in a lot of things, and it's all in that book. So I, yeah. I but that, the, uh, those examples, it's, it's brutally honest. That's the thing about the, that particular book. I mean, we didn't, didn't pull any punches, and, uh, you know, it's, it's all there, you very know. Very candid. Okay, very candid. Yeah, okay. Fascinating. Okay. Well, T-boned by an 18-wheeler. When EMTs arrived at the scene, they expected the driver to be dead. The 23-year-old was alive, but just barely. So what helped his parents hold on to hope? A fourfold promise from God. June 24th, 2016. EMT Greg Clark and the Fort Worth Fire Department responded to an accident involving a car and an 18-wheeler. We were first ones to arrive and sure enough, a large truck T-boned another vehicle, hit him in the driver's side door. My immediate thought was, it's probably gonna be a body recovery, not a rescue situation. Amazingly, they found the driver, 23-year-old Charles Priest, unconscious but alive. He was airlifted to Texas Health Fort Worth Hospital in critical condition. Moments later, his mother, Cherie, drove up on the accident. It, it was unbelief. What am I looking at? What am I saying? Is, is this really him? At that point, I think all the emotions turned off and it was the matter of, you gotta get to your son. After an officer filled her in, Cherie went home and picked up her younger son, Texas, and husband, Chuck. Speeding towards the hospital, they prayed. Okay, God, what's going on? You know, is he gonna be okay? I was just praying that, it, that God was gonna be in the midst of it. When the family arrived at Texas Health Fort Worth, they learned Charles was in a coma. Dr. Mohammed Siadati was one of the medical staff caring for Charles. CAT scans revealed severe head injury, neck injury, broken ribs, blood in the chest, broken pelvis. His head injury was the most severe one. And there is micro tears. It's damage at cellular level that not necessarily obvious. To see your son lying there and not know if you would ever see his eyes open again and not know if you would ever hear him talk again. It was just overwhelming, heart-wrenching. Although hoping for the best, doctors could make no guarantees. And it was those kind of things. If he survives, if he wakes up, and we don't know when, and there's nothing, and there's no way for them to predict what's going to happen. As the staff worked round the clock, friends and family gathered to pray, holding on to hope. I may never get to speak to him again. I, I may never get to see him again. We may never get to laugh together again. I thought I was about to lose my son. After three days, it was clear Charles would live, but he still faced the possibility of several permanent disabilities. His fractured neck might require surgery, severely limiting his mobility. But doctors' main concern was the elevated cranial pressure. The longer it remained, the more brain damage it could cause. His parents feared their son would never be the same. I mean, there was absolutely nothing we could do um, except for praying and, and, for, and trusting in the Lord. Pleading with Father and asking him to, 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 to allow us to have another day to play basketball. Alone in the waiting room one evening, Cherie says she was praying when the Lord gave her a promise. I was sitting in the waiting room and I was looking out the window. I saw a dark cloud out in the distance. When I saw that cloud and he took me back to Psalms 18, and it's just a beautiful passage. It starts out with my cry came to the Lord's ear and he heard me. The next several verses describe nature responding because he got up and he came to my rescue. And the Lord gave me those four things that he's gonna wake up, he's gonna know who God is, he's gonna know who our family is, and he's gonna run. A week later, Charles' cranial pressure stabilized. 
and the doctors took him for an MRI. The family waited for the results. They said, what we expect is for his brain to look like dog food. And then they put the images up on the screen, and the image of his brain is a healthy brain. And the doctors were surprised. They didn't expect to see it intact that way. Over the next several days, Charles started waking up from the coma, responding to verbal commands. To the staff, it was a great improvement. To the family, it was confirmation that God was answering their prayers. The doctor would come in and say, we're going to do a breathing test, but don't, don't be shocked. It's going to take him a while. And then in a couple of days, he's breathing on his own. And within a week, he's eating solid food. Only six weeks after the accident, he exits the hospital walking. Then after wearing a neck brace for four months, he was released by doctors with no surgery and no medical restrictions. So when it was done, it was done. I was the last part of my recovery. And for me to walk away from that with no restrictions, there's no way that I can look at any of the stuff that happened to me and realize it's not a miracle. Charles not only finished his college degree, he was deemed physically and mentally fit to pursue his dream and serve in the Texas National Guard. God is who he says he is. God will do what he says he will do. And if I doubt that, all I have to do is go look at my son. He's not good because of the healing. He's good regardless of whether or not my son was healed. He revealed himself to us in this, and all I, all I can do is say thank you. God is good all the time, and He is in every circumstance that we face. He loves to heal. He loves to show off His power and His goodness and His kindness and mercy and Good. grace. And that's, so, that's amazing with the brain like dog food, just completely mm, a mess. And yeah. for that to come back together, you talk about a miracle. That is extra to walk out of the hospital. Extraordinary. extraordinary. Absolutely. Well, here's yeah, another go, go miracle that happened recently. Pat, this is Caesar who lives in Carlsbad, California. He writes to say, my wife and I watch the 700 Club every evening before retiring to bed. On Thursday, August 13th, 2020, Pat prayed for someone with TMJ. I raised my hands to the Lord and claimed the blessing. I have had this problem for months, and after touching my jaw, there was no pain. I was able to eat a bagel without <laughs> issues. Well, we rejoice with you, Caesar. God is good. Isn't Pat, you great? got one yeah, too. That was just a few days ago. Yes. Yeah, yes. I remember that. Okay. This is Melody, who lives in Barrow, Alaska. She had misaligned hips and lower back. She was watching this program. She heard Terry say, someone with a right hip issue, your whole system is off as far as your walk is concerned. Your gait, God's healing you. Melody said, that's me. I believe it. She was healed instantly of a misaligned, that meant a shorter leg and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Uh, uh, there's nothing. God, God says there's nothing too small for me. Well, listen, folks, we want to pray for you right now. You know, God is no respecter of persons, and He is able. You know, the Bible I was reading today, the Proverbs says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lead not on to your own understanding, and all your way acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. God is able. Trust in Him with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to figure, well, I can't heal that hip. I can't feel, heal that head. I can't heal it. Well, no, you can't, but God can. Now, we're going to pray for you right now. So all I'm asking you to do is believe God as we pray, receive an answer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for these miracles that we hear about. Thank you, Lord. Somebody has an arthritic condition. You're... You're crippled uh, uh, in your spine. There's this arthritis of the spine, and you're almost bent over. Right now, it's like God himself is readjusting your spine, and you're standing up straight. Just believe God in Jesus' name. Touch him. Terry. Mm -hmm. There's someone, you have a, a condition with your intestines. It's... Um, one of those diverticulosis, diverticulitis scenarios where you actually have now had 
um, some cracks in your intestinal wall and you're having to have some surgery and it's just, it could be really life-changing for you. God's healing that condition for you. You're gonna be able to not just uh, not have the condition, you're gonna eat freely, it's not coming back. You're not going to suffer all the long-term problems that have been raised to you. You're healed in Jesus' name. Now, multiple myeloma, the Lord is just healing that condition. George, I believe that's you, the one who's got it. And God just touched, and there's be, there'll be power all through your body right now, just whew, and you're healed. And Lord, for others in this audience who are praying, they're praying for family conditions, they're praying for finances, they're praying because they, they have no hope. Grant hope to your people today, we pray. In the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, touch lives and may God be at work. Uh, Terry, you have something else I believe for Yeah, I believe there's somebody you have a case of neuropathy. It's not just in your feet. It's also your hands. You have this burning and, and your, it's like your nerve endings have just gone okay. crazy. Right now, just lift up your hands and praise God as he heals that for you. Your nerve endings are coming back to life and you're gonna be normal again in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Uh, give us a call. If, if you need pr further prayer, we've got folks at the phone, 1-800-700-7000. Uh, I want to hear the answers to prayer. We're always thrilled to hear what God has done in your life. So just go to your phone and call in. Now we've got time for something else. Well, we do. Still ahead, we've got your questions and Pat's honest answers. Julie says, I am addicted to drinking soda pop. What can I do? I really enjoy it. Is this a sin? Well, stay tuned. Pat will answer that. Plus, when you're hot, you're hot. And you don't get any hotter right now in baseball than Charlie Blackman. Could the Colorado Rockies right fielder hit 400 this season? That's the question coming up. Welcome back to Washington for this CBN News Break. A controversial presentation at a Goodyear tire plant prompted President Trump to say people should not buy the company's products. This after reports that a plant in Topeka, Kansas showed a slide during a training that Black Lives Matter and LGBT Pride apparel, LGBT pride apparel were acceptable, but Blue Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, and MAGA attire were unacceptable. Goodyear responded to the president saying that slide was not created or distributed by Goodyear corporate, nor was it part of a diversity training class. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is responding to reports of the likely undercounting of coronavirus deaths in the Empire State's nursing homes. One report found that New York's official elder care home death count of more than 6,600 is likely off by thousands. New York is the only state that explicitly says it counts just residents who died on nursing home property and not those who were taken to hospitals and died there. Most states count them as nursing home deaths even if the patient is taken to the hospital. Cuomo says he's concerned that could result in a double count. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Every day, Nicole Seitz struggles to keep herself together for her kids. After their dad died, Nicole became the sole breadwinner. And then she was injured twice and she couldn't work. So who is going to feed her family? Take a look. Nicole Seitz is a single mom who says her broken heart has been strengthened by the courage of her children. Nicole was widowed three years ago when her husband died in a car accident. You know, when you lose your husband, they also lost their dad. They're so strong and they're everything for me. My mom is very beautiful and kind. I'm very happy that she's in our life. Nicole provided for the family by working as a restaurant manager until two debilitating injuries changed everything. I herniated a disc and I had back surgery. Two months after I had my disc surgery, I totaled my Buick and we believe it's re-herniated the disc. 
Trying to make ends meet while she recovers has been challenging. Every month I write it out, try to figure out how much money I can spend on food, how much I want to pay on this bill or this bill. You have to feed them, but you have to make it last. With nowhere else to turn, Nicole reached out to Bread of Life, a partner of Operation Blessing. It was enough food to feed us for the entire month. It was amazing. It's really a lifesaver for us. The food has brought joy to Nicole's kids. They are always excited. It's more than just food. It's really a spirit lifter for them. It's caring people that remember me and ask how I'm doing. And it just makes you feel like people care. She says she's been overwhelmed by the generosity of Operation Blessing Partners. When you're looking at your kids and they're hungry and you come back with all this food, just the smiles on their face, you can't thank somebody for that. There's just not enough words. You're amazing. Absolutely amazing. You're not alone. You are not alone. And Nicole was desperate, you know, but she's not alone. Why? Because of you. Because of you. And, and all of us together at Operation Blessing and CBN, we care about people. We care about people. And God cares about the poor and the needy. And he says, look after the widows and the orphans. And she, she was a widow. And God reached in and used us and used you to help us. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's 65 cents a day, $20 a month. You become a 700 Club member. And you can become part of an army of thousands and thousands of people who are helping people like Nicole and poor people all over the world and those who are hurting and those who need medical support and, and all the things that we do through Operation Blessing. We help hundreds and hundreds of millions of people around the world. Now, if you want to participate, and I hope you do, to help people like Nicole Seitz, $20 a month becomes a 700 Club member. It's so little, but you know, it's hard when you have got everything you need to think that there's a poor widow with a bunch of children who had not got enough money to feed herself and she needs help, and we want to be there to help her. So I want to give you something called, Would, Do You Need a Miracle? Real Life Stories of God at Work. And this is our gift to you when you join the 700 Club. So please go to the phone, call in 1-800-700-7000. Terry, you got some. Well, I, I do, Pat. I have a, a word from Barbara from Longview, Texas, who writes to say thank you, Pat, and all who had a part in making this beautiful, powerful, Do You Need a Miracle DVD. Each time I watch and listen to it, I hear more truth that goes from my head to my heart. And that's one of the reasons that we do the gifts that's, that we do right. from here. Amen. So well, that's the telephone. Thing. All right, call in. And well, still ahead, Pat's going to take the hot seat and answer your email questions. Anthony says this, how do I build up my marriage? We've got your questions and Pat's honest answers. That's coming up. Plus, up next, at bat, the Colorado Rockies' Charlie Blackman. Watch him hit it out of the park when we come back. Shortened season or not, Colorado's Charlie Blackman is putting up numbers that haven't been seen in decades. The all-star outfielder is trying to become the first player to hit 400 since Ted Williams back in 1941. CBN's Tom Buring caught up with the slugger to see what motivates him on and off the field. And it's not just the beard. Come to Denver and you'll find a baseball swashbuckler. Rockies all-star center fielder Charlie Blackman rattles opponents with an elite bat, prize power, base running speed, and of course, that beard. On and off the field, the guy they call Chuck Nasty holds a great first impression. First man up as a leadoff hitter, you're the tone setter. Tip of the spear, what, what is it about the role that you relish the most? I like being the first guy to go to the plate. Uh, I'm gonna get the most at bats that night. I'm kind of the first representative of the Rockies out there. If I do well and get on base, we have a good chance to score because we have you know, such good players behind me. So I really enjoy being the catalyst of sorts. And as the playmaker, what one play as a hitter or fielder most energizes you? 
Well, I gotta say home runs, because the home runs make the, make the game go around. Maybe the next best thing is a two out RBI, because that's just such a big momentum shifter. You know, momentum is not something people talk about in baseball, but I think scoring a run when the other team thinks they're gonna get out unscathed can really do a lot for your psyche and then get the momentum coming your way. And the beard, that's a tone setter, right? Right. And are you now convinced that the two of you are inseparable? I showed up at spring training in 2014 and made the team for the first time with my beard. And so I decided to stick with it. And uh, I was lucky enough to, to make the all-star team that year. And so if it ain't broke, don't fix yeah, it. So I, I just kept it and uh, it's something that I enjoy. How have you learned to separate defeat from your self-worth? For me, spiritually, realizing that, you know, baseball is something that I spend a lot of time doing but you can't turn baseball into an idol. What you derive your self-worth from, it has to be something you do, not who you are. And once I figured all those things out, uh, honestly, baseball seemed a lot smaller to me. But with the ups and downs and the struggles of failure that are gonna happen inevitably within the game of baseball. We said you're the tone setter out there. Who and what is the tone setter for Charlie Blackman? You know, I ask for a grateful heart every day, and even when it seems tough, you, know, you should rejoice in being tested. Everything needs to be an opportunity in my eyes and not an obstacle. Charlie, what do you admire most about the Christ that you follow? The love that he has for me, even though I don't deserve it, you know, that grace is something that you know, I try to understand. It's hard to comprehend. You know, I try and learn more about him every day, and I just want to represent our God and what I do on the field, how I treat people, and what I'm thinking all the time also. I think that's very important. Also important is Charlie's reputation as an independent thinker who values genuine Christian commitment. I think it's very important for a few reasons. Be honest with yourself. You've got to earnestly believe. And then if you believe it, then you have to, you know, you have to live it out, right? Like if you actually believe Jesus is who he says he is and that he died for our sins, then you can't just ignore that fact and go on doing whatever you feel like you're doing. You know, authenticity is going to show up. People are going to find you out, you know, if you're just talking the talk and not walking the walk. How can we pray for you when we think of you and watch it? Good question. Every day I, I think humility is big, like I need humility. And then I also need to stop thinking about myself so much. I need to be more concerned about other people, the people that I'm around, the people I interact with, even the people that I'm playing against. And um, so maybe just to, you know that faith to step out and speak to someone or help someone who might need it. Charlie Blackman, we wish him well. It's amazing. It'd be nice to see him break that record. 400. <laughs> First time since Ted Williams. Yes. This is a long, long time ago. It sure yeah. is. Okay. Well, time for some questions, Pat. Right. This is Anthony who says, Pat, I am addicted to drinking soda pop. I drink it daily, but every time I drink it, I feel like I'm sinning because I know it's not a healthy drink. What can I do? I really enjoy it. Is this a sin? Oh, uh, I, I think, you know, the Bible says whatever is not of faith is sin. If you feel like it's sinning, you shouldn't do it. But just remember, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of sugary stuff will hurt you. I mean, you know, Cokes and things like that taste really good. I mean, they really do. They make them taste good. They wouldn't <laughs> sell so many of them. But all that sugar content and the way it is is not good for you. It doesn't build your body up, and it hurts you. I mean, sugar actually keeps you from building up your muscles and the other things. And in, in terms of a workout, if you have sugar before you work out, you, you're you're workout is probably diminished by 50 percent. So you say, I'm addicted to it, or just see yourself as the temple of the living God and say, I want to make the temple best that I possibly can to the glory of God. End of story. All right. Mm -hmm. This is Julie who says, how do I build up my marriage? You build up your marriage with thinking about good things about your husband, your spouse. Uh, you know, it's so easy to say, well, uh, she snores or he snores or uh, he, he smells bad or uh, he doesn't, you know, pick up the, his clothes or doesn't hang up the suits or whatever you got. I mean, there are a hundred things. Think constantly, every day. Think of about four or five things that you admire about your, your spouse. She is faithful. She looks after the children. She's a terrific cook. She's a wonderful mother. 
She's a terrific partner, and uh, she loves the Lord. I mean, think of these things. And always do that. This, you want to know how to build up your marriage? That's the way to do it. Build up the spouse in your mind and say good things. And they become, you know, what, what do they say? Give a dog a good name, they live up to it. Give them a good name and watch what happens. All right. This is Harold who says, Pat, you say that when people say vehicles will wreck and planes will crash when the rapture occurs, that it's, quote, all nonsense. It won't happen that way. Are you saying that whenever the rapture occurs, pre-trib, mid-trib or post-trib, that none of those involved will be in moving vehicles or aircraft and there will be no unbelievers left on Earth? No, I'm, I'm not saying all that. I think that pre-trib rapture stuff is just nonsense. I mean, you know, what you think of it left behind, uh, airplanes are flying along and suddenly the pilot is caught up and he leaves his suit in, 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 in the seat yes, beside him and the plane crashes. I mean, this is nonsense. When the Lord comes, he's going to send his angels. He'll gather the elect from the four corners of the earth and uh, he will take control of everything. And there will not be any train wrecks or people left behind. He will, the, we will be caught up to be with him and the Lord. That will be the end of things, period. Okay, not pre-trib, not pre but Immediately after the tribulation of those days, then shall appear in the heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and he will send his angels to the four corners of the earth to gather his elect. Okay, then it's going to happen. Okay. This is Thomas, who says, James 2.24 says that we are not saved by faith alone. When I've asked or brought it up in Bible studies, I'm told something to the effect of, that's not what it means. But no one seems to have an answer as to what it does mean. Can you help? Well, Luther, I think, called James the epistle of straw. He didn't like it. He goes, he thought it's by sole fide, by faith alone. Um, James said, look, uh, you say that you're saved by faith alone. And you're not saved by works, but I'm going to show my faith by the way I live. Well, th that's what he said, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I'm going to live out before you, but I do. But it is by faith. You, you, your works don't save you. Faith saves you. But if you have faith, you will live it out, and that's what he, people will see. Yes. That's yes. what he was talking about, I believe. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We do, as we always tell you, love hearing from you, and you always give us some great directions. I hope so, so thank you. Well, today's power minute is from Second Timothy. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Well, tomorrow we take you to one of the most controversial streets in America, Richmond's Monument Avenue. Ooh. Oh. Well, somebody's going there. <laughs> all right. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate the fact that you let us come into your home for this time, period of time. And we hope that we've been a blessing to you as you have been to us. Bye-bye.